Um, I believe that one package, one 12 ounce package, is usually stands in for one pound of ground beef, if you're using it in other recipes. And then we'll add some seasonings, uh, and then we'll add some tomatoes, the cheese, and the lettuce, and cook it all down, and then we can serve it with our chips. So now we're ready. To, uh, this is just some extra virgin olive oil, and we're probably going to put about a couple of teaspoons of it or so. And this stuff is great because it really, you can use it as a ground beef substitute in just about anything from like meatloaf to pasta dishes and um, people don't really notice the difference too much. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit of paprika and cumin. And once again, if there are other spices that you really like or if you like a hotter pepper, you can certainly feel free to add that. Um, I find that with dry spices, it's good to toast them in the oil a little bit. It really brings out the flavors as opposed to sprinkling them on top at the end. So I would say probably this is really to your taste, but maybe a tablespoon each of the paprika and the cumin. Um, and that really is up to your taste. You can certainly put more or less, depending on what you like. And uh, this has been cooking for about three or four minutes, and um, you'll notice some parts of this are a little bit browner than others. It's a little bit hard to see, but uh, that's kind of how you know when it's done. <laughs> so now we're going to add some tomatoes. So I like to uh, just add one can, that's 14 ounces, of tomatoes. And then what I like to do is, you'll notice there's a lot left in here. So what I do is I rinse out the can, I fill it about halfway just with water and rinse it out and put that into the dish as well. Okay, now that we have the tomatoes in here, I'm going to add the remaining ingredients. And um, I like to use lettuce in this, but if you like other vegetables, you can certainly substitute whatever it is you like. You also don't have to cook the vegetables if you don't want. You can certainly add uh, shredded lettuce that's fresh at the end or, or on top of the dish as you serve it, if you prefer that. Okay, so the lettuce has been cooking in here for a couple minutes, and so I'm just lifting it up to see how it's doing. And you'll see it's definitely got less volume of lettuce than we had before. Now, another thing I'm noticing as I stir this around is that I think I would like to have some more tomatoes in here. And that's going to depend also on the consistency of your final product. Um, I like to have it a little more watery, um, but certainly if you don't like as much water, you can leave it with just one can of tomatoes. So I'm going to add one more can of tomatoes now. And now we can actually add our final ingredient as well, which is the vegan cheese. Now a note about vegan cheeses. So there are a number of different types of fake cheese products that you can get out there. Um, some of them are actually not vegan because they contain a milk protein called casein. Now these guys, we can't say it's cheese. They make a vegan cheese which is um, free, so it's free of casein. What I also like is that it does not include an ingredient called carrageenan. Carrageenan is a sea vegetable based ingredient that they put in a lot of tofu and almond cheeses to help it coagulate. Um, it can be tough on your digestive system, so I prefer this type of cheese. These guys make uh, four different kinds of products depending on what you need. Uh, some are more like a sauce, which is what this is, and some are more like a spread. So these we can just put directly into the dish. This cheese, by the way, it does not, it's not required that it needs to be cooked. It's a product you can eat straight from this uh, dish, if you'd like. I like to cook all these ingredients because, like I said, it's simpler, so it's in one dish and it's all ready for me to go. Um, also, things, once they've been cooked, tend to keep a little longer in your fridge, too. So if you're looking to kind of make this last for a couple of weeks, it's a little safer if you've cooked it all. And now I think the cheese is pretty well incorporated with the rest of the mixture. Now, I would say that you would want to let it cook for about 10 to 15 minutes uncovered, and what that'll do, two things. One is all the ingredients will start to come together, and the other is that a little bit of the water will evaporate as well. So this has been cooking for about 10 to 15 minutes, and you'll see that it's a little thicker now, and it will continue to thicken um, if you put it in the fridge for a couple days and eat leftovers later on. It'll be thicker then as well. Um, now let's say, so this right now is like a consistency almost of a soup, so you could even just break some tortillas into here and make it a tortilla soup. Um, if you wanted it, for example, to be thicker, um, what you could do is not add that second can of tomatoes we added, or add the can of tomatoes but don't rinse it out with the water so there'll be less water that you're adding to the dish. This, as you can see, is a finished dish and I've served it with some chips. You can also put it on pasta or baked potatoes or there are a number of ways that you can serve this dish. Um, I chose in this particular case, because it is a little bit watery, to not actually put it over the chips, because that will make the chips soggy. But you can now dip the chips in there, and it will be delicious. Bon appetit!